Diagnosing Illness Using Auras and Bridges Remote Diagnosis Using Bridges Some sensitives are able to remotely diagnose that someone is ill, and they use a bridge. Hair, an article of clothing, a paper or a letter sent by the patient, something the patient has handled. Harriet Martineau Letters on Mesmerism As her powers improve, she becomes able on rare occasions, which can never be anticipated, to discern bit by bit the disease of a person she never heard of, whose hair, sent under proper conditions, is silently put into her hands. This exercise appears to absorb her attention and interest more than any other. She renews the effort time after time, sees more and more and in one case appears to have penetrated the matter completely, declaring spontaneously that the lady, whom she could never have heard of and who was a stranger to us, was nearly blind and must be treated in such and such a manner. Francis Ferrelli worked remotely using blood as the bridge. She worked with doctors on an official basis, as non-invasive diagnosis has enormous advantages over exploratory surgery, biopsies or x-rays. Auras but no diagnosis Some people can just see the auras of people, whether sick or not. Democritus was an ancient Greek pre-Socratic philosopher, born around 460 BC, remembered today for his formulation of an atomic theory of the universe. But he could see auras. Democritus. They communicate and transmit to the recipients the opinions, thoughts and impulses of their senders. When they reach their goal, with the images intact and undistorted, the images which leap out from persons in an excited and inflamed condition yield, owing to their high frequency and rapid transit, especially vivid and significant representations. But these impressions may not be used to diagnose illness. Edgar Casey is one of America's best known healers, but he was unaware that he was even seeing an aura. So diagnosis and healing do not necessarily work together. Joseph Millard Edgar Casey. Edgar was walking back to the depot with Lane when they met a man tramping down the street, wrapped in a cloud of personal misery. He was a drab, dull, nondescript little man. As they met, Edgar glanced at him and shuddered. Ooh, what a horrid combination of colours. Lane threw a startled glance back, then stared at Edgar. What colours? I thought he was about as colourless as any man I've ever seen. Oh, I didn't mean his clothing, Edgar said. He made a gesture, circling his own face with a forefinger. I meant the colours that shine out around him. They were a hideous, jarring combination of darks. Didn't you think so? Lane stopped short, his mouth open. Let me get this right. Are you speaking of his aura? Aura? Edgar said blankly. What's that? <laughs> Holy Moses, Lane said softly. An aura is a kind of radiance that 
Mystics and clairvoyants claim they can see shining out around everybody. Do you mean to tell me you could actually see one around him? Edgar stared at him in a complete bewilderment. Do you mean other people don't see that glow from everyone? Why, I thought everybody saw that, just the way they see a man's ears or, or his hair. Furthermore, even though the aura may be visible to a person, they might not use it for diagnosis. Gifted children are often able to see illness, but may not be aware they might be seeing emotional distress and illness. The Boy Who Saw True Janet told Mildred, who told me, that Mr Wilcox had a carbuncle somewhere. I wonder why it's called that, because Mother wears a brooch with a carbuncle which Papa gave her at Christmas. I think Mr Wilcox's carbuncle must be on where he sits down, because when I went to say how do you do to him before he got undressed, I saw a sort of black cloud in his lights just there, but I thought I'd better say nothing. If he had feel shy. Mr Wilcox's carbuncle is on his BTM. He told me himself it was a great secret, so I was right. He made a joke, though, and said he couldn't sit down, and he couldn't stand up, and he couldn't lie on his back, so he was in a fine fix and all. We may postulate that a great many people can actually see auras, but do not realise what they are. I have not been trained or helped to understand what they are seeing. A great, untapped skill that could be used to heal. Auras and Diagnosis There are, however, people not only able to see auras, but pinpoint what is wrong. Dr. Shafika Caragula. Breakthrough to Creativity The next day we selected chair number seven before we entered the clinic. We sat down quietly and began our observations on the patient immediately. Diane saw a disturbed pattern of energy in the vortex at the throat, with an irregular rhythm and grey colour. The vortex at the pituitary was also disturbed and the energy vortex at the solar plexus. When Diane looked at the physical body itself, she described low function of the thyroid. She went on to say, The pituitary gland is not there, it is out. The pancreas is not functioning, and the adrenals are functioning very poorly. It seems that the periphery of the adrenals is not functioning. The breaths have been affected, but they are not there now. There is not enough energy going through the spine from the waist down. She has trouble with her legs. The medical report on the patient said that the pituitary glands had been removed and the patient was being given a pituitary and cortisone. The breasts had been removed because of cancer. She had had an operation on her back and decompression of the cord to relieve pains in her legs, numbness and difficulty in emptying the bladder. The patient was still taking cortisone, pituitrin and thyroid. These people diagnose and do not heal. From a conventional doctor's point of view, these people should be invaluable as they can often find illness the patient is reluctant to discuss or simply does not know is there, because the symptoms have not emerged or are not recognised as symptoms. And we have two guest videos about just such people. Jason Ward The first two videos in the playlist describe Jason Ward the two videos need to be seen together and are from the Opera Winfrey Network. Medical Intuition – Miracle Detectives In the first video, a conventional doctor describes diagnosis using standard questions and symptoms. 
Testing Intuition Miracle Detectives The second video shows Jason with a real patient diagnosing using his psychic powers and Jason manages to find far more things that need treating than the doctor which given they have been found early may provide a cure. Dora Van Gelder Goods A link to Dora's biography on our website can be found below. But this interview with Dr. Shafika Karagula is from 1986 and has been released as part of the Theosophical Society in America's classic series. It is a gem, as chakras, meridians, nadis and diagnosis are all explained and discussed. Linking in very helpfully with our videos on the symbolism of rivers and streams, the chalice, the cup and the Holy Grail. The symbolism of chakras and flowers. And the concept of the aura and the symbol of the island. Jeffrey Mishlov. If the concept of the aura is still unclear, a further video by Dr. Jeffrey Mishlov is provided. Diagnosis and Healing There are some people who simply have the power to heal, but don't diagnose the illness. In effect, the ability to see auras or use bridges is not how they work. They intuitively know what is wrong and even employ mass healing on occasion. These pure healers are described in our playlist on healing itself and this is Jack Schwartz. But there are people who use what they can see and then heal the blockages and the aura irregularities they have encountered. Barbara Brennan is one such healer and we have provided a link to our website so you can find out more. Her books and videos are all widely available on the internet. Dr. Hiroshi Moitayama. The final video in our playlist is about Dr. Moitayama. The speaker, Dr. Thomas Brophy, president of the California Institute of Human Science, describes its Japanese founder, Hiroshi Moitayama, who was a parapsychologist, yogi, and a Shinto priest. Moitayama is known for his studies related to the meridians of acupuncture as well as the chakras of yoga, and how to use them for diagnosis and healing. He is the inventor of the apparatus for meridian identification, the AMI. As such, Dr. Motoyama is a fitting person to end this video, as he advocated the synthesis of modern science with the world's spiritual traditions. Dr. Hiroshi Motoyama, Chakras, Auras and Meridians from Energetic Medicine, New Science of Healing, by Eamon Fares, July the 26th, 2011. At my research institute, we measured many subjects, maybe about 100,000 so far, over 20 years. Unfortunately, we have been able to investigate many psychics, martial arts masters and yogis, as well as students of our own disciplines yoga exercises and meditation, and so on. We have been able to detect the chakras, and also I have some ability to see the chakras and whether they are awakened in a person or not. So firstly, I would clearly see with my ESP ability, the psychic ability, which chakra is awakened. If the chakra is awakened, we can see the very bright colours of the aura, and also feel much energy from this awakened chakra. Then we measured subjects with the AMI machine and have been able to determine if particular chakras are awakened. For example, those who have the Manipura chakra awakened have highly energized spleen, liver, stomach, meridians. After analyzing much data obtained from many kinds of psychics 
or normal people. I found on the basis of this data and on the basis of my own supernatural understanding of such people that we could connect the specific meridians with each chakra and link this with traditional theories about the chakras. For example, a person with an awakened Manipura chakra can control the emotions and also the functioning of the digestive system. We learn much about each meridian and chakra from working with yogis and could link this with our AMI data.